Take me back to the garden Where it all began Take me back to the garden We were walking hand in hand My eyes were filled with wonder My heart was filled with peace Lost in the mystery, it's all that I could see. Take me back to the garden and walk with me. Do you want to make a wish with me? Let's make a wish. What are we going to wish for? I have a bunch of rules that I apply to my wishing, and here they are. They're called the fairy wish rules. Think of something that you really need, not just something you desire. Hold that in your mind's eye, hold that in your heart, really feel it in your bones. Think of a magical word. It could be any word that you use. I use the words, let it be, and then we're gonna make our wish, and then I'll tell you the final step. So the final step is to tell as many people as you can because real magic comes from, depending on our community, telling people what we really need and just spreading that around, just telling as many people as we feel comfortable. That's actually where the real magic comes from because sometimes when people know what we need, they might give it to us. And even if they can't, they're gonna think about it on our behalf. So keep believing, keep telling people your thoughts, keep sharing who you are, and eventually it'll come together. Of course, I'm in my wild magic hat and I'm just living into the day. Let's go and harvest. Oh, wild witch, come harvest in my field. Come share in my bounty. Come cook on my fire. Come grind to make medicine. Come be nourished by this food, Mother Earth. Pretty sure I found a snail. So we're gonna see. It is a snail. Oh my gosh, look at this little guy. I'm so excited because I found snails and I have wanted to keep snails ever since I saw Aurora's video, The Hazelwood Witch. Um, I'm going to link her channel below with the video of her snails, but oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. I've always wanted to keep snails, and I've just been waiting for the opportunity where I find them um, out in the world. Oh, I want to see. This one guy's coming out. I want you to see him. Oh, can you see his little guy? Oh my gosh, so cute. I can't, I can't. I just, oh my God, I love snails so much. Can you see this magical slime? It reminds me of jewelweed. It's just, follow the trail to magic. Oh, look at it, it's shiny. It's so beautiful. Welcome, wild ones. Throughout this video, we will craft with the elements of the wild. All of the recipes are below for you and if you have any questions, just ask in the comments. I'd also love to hear from you. I'd love to know how you feel about all of this. So as we get into the video, if you feel inspired, drop a comment below. Also like and subscribe, and let's begin. What does it mean to be a wild witch? To be wild is to be free, to be messy, untamed, unashamed, and natural. Wildland has been called uninhibitable. Nobles would call peasants unsophisticated, but many folk stories tell the tale of nobles wishing for that freedom from a person who lives so closely to the land. In all their riches, they would give them all up for this freedom, to be free and to be wild. And yet, there is part of wildness that can be scary the side of ourselves that is feral, out of control, undisciplined, and yet we allow ourselves to be our true selves. We are most connected to source, 
unencumbered by obligation, we become intuitive and sensing beings that we were born to be and to have a purpose. When in that wild state of mind, we just know what we are and we feel the forest in a way that brings us into her trees. We become her branches, we are her roots. There is no future, there is no past, there is now. When we run wild, we don't show up on time because instinct takes over and we live in a life of daydream. We live in the clouds and this is part of a wild life most unseen. And in the wild, we must also have moments where we move from that dreamy life to impulse, to instinct. We must get sharp. So with these waves of various emotions running through a day, the wild witch must find balance. And this is a lifelong task. What magic is made comes from connecting to these parts of ourselves. The craft is born from the desire to be wild, but to know when to tame as well. And a wild witch's tools are her plants, the energies of the forests, fields, and gardens, even the deserts. I first studied herbalism in the desert, and that is where my practice was truly shaped. I have recently found a book that I highly recommend on wild witchcraft by Rebecca Beyer. I promise to do a full review, but for now, if you see it on screen and it calls to you as it did me, here is that moment. The book is full of wild witchcraft, history, folk herbalism, wild witchery, and I additionally recommend the audio version of this book. Thank you to Rebecca for creating this book for the wild witch. Let's talk about tools of the trade as we craft this witch hazel infusion of root plants that I use as a facial spray and head into the forest to harvest. A wild witch's practice can vary, but I suppose if I have to name the shape of the practice, I would say forest witchcraft and correspondences, green kitchen witchcraft with wild plant elements, folk herbalism blended with herbalist witchcraft practices, and foraging witchcraft, this is the realm of the wild witch. I share all of this here on my channel, so feel free to watch more videos from me to get a sense of these elements. I don't believe you have to practice all of these elements to be a true wild witch, but these certainly are the tools. I touched on this already, but I wanted to say it more direct here now. Being a wild witch is about getting in tune with your wild nature. So what is your wild nature? The brilliant thing is by working with any of these tools of the trade, your wild nature will begin to emerge on its own. The wild has a way of bringing us back to our wild selves. But in my experience, wild nature is the side of me that trusts myself. It is the side of me that has a strong instinct and intuition. Sometimes I get in trouble with this in real life. As a wild one, I am often missing from life. Where is Heather? Lost in her daydreams, wandering in the forest harvesting medicine, off in the wild witch apothecary making just one more recipe. And so I caution all wild ones to seek balance in themselves. Find that wild, yes. Nourish yourself with it, yes. But take care. Don't let the wild take you and reclaim you for her own. We are humans living in a modern world. We are witches. If you are at the beginning of building this practice, go slowly. This practice is about you and the plant realm. Like I said before, the wild can also be a scary place, poisonous and treacherous. This practice is a lifelong journey and you will need to go slowly. You will need to be prepared for the elements, navigate harvesting plants for medicine, food and witchcraft sustainably and safely. Above all, you will need books, apps to identify plants, knowledge of laws when wildcrafting, and the best way to begin is to start slow, ask questions, and find other witches who are wild, who will help. Speaking of which, I will finally be starting my Patreon at the end of the summer or sometime in the early fall. 
for those of you wanting a gathering place to connect with other wild witches. It has been my dream to find you all, wild ones, and I can't wait to learn from you. There will be a monthly online gathering with a topic to explore, engage with, and this will be witchcraft focused. I truly can't wait to begin, for the wild witches are calling, and this is our time to rise. Let's craft a simple recipe that would be perfect for your first recipe or a recipe that you can make each year to honor the rising spring or summer. Chop up some wild garlic mustard and add it to softened butter. The fridge will harden it back up and take its form. I also made a vegan version as well. And it wouldn't be a wild witchcraft video of mine without some herbalism. So while I craft some olive oil infusions of rose, calendula, and lavender for winter salve making, let's talk about oil infusions. I talk about this a lot, so I won't mention the basic details here. I want to mention some supportive information here for those of you starting to make your own. Always use dried plants. If you use dried plants and oil, having them sit for four to six weeks, or if you do a heat infusion, this will be healthy. As long as the oil is all the way to the top with a lid on it, if you're having it sit on a shelf for four to six weeks, you want the least amount of air as possible. If you use wet herbs or fresh herbs, you risk mold and bacteria growth. Once you're skilled at this, you may work with a few selected fresh herbs, but even then you will have to be very careful. Do research this element of wild witchcraft prior to beginning. And as much as I am cautioning you, remember, our ancestors were herbalists. They used what they could from the wild to enrich their lives. They did it, and they didn't die. So as much as I am cautioning you, I am also encouraging you. I recommend a few videos below for you to find your confidence and to learn the basic skills. How do we infuse our potions, herbal infusions, and other kinds of wild kitchen witchery? You can do this in many ways but overall through your words, your actions, and your thoughts. So you can say what you will, act into that will. Sigils are a great way to start an action and think that will into being. The more you repeat those thoughts, the stronger the magic becomes. So when we really see a wildlife come alive, it is many little actions, deeds, and harvests that create this life. It can feel overwhelming to be called back to the wild side of yourself, to become a wild witch. For it isn't always sunshine and rainbows, and it's hard work. There is much to learn and to face about ourselves as each craft and working peels away the onions of the true self. It will challenge you, enliven you, encircle your every thought. But if 
you are ready, the wild is calling. When I took up my birch bark slime covered wand, I was a child who just never wanted to come inside. My own witchcraft journey came with many ups and downs, but what I can leave you with is that now that I look back, my craft was built one dirt covered boot at a time, one salve, one swim, one recipe at a time. Choose one a month for 10 years and you will create the life you desire. There is no rush, so stay wild and blessings to your magical workings and as always, come and find me again.